Hi, and welcome to Transfer Talk. We're going to look at some of the rumours, gossip and news about incomings and outgoings at Vicarage Road. This is what's coming up. Should I stay or should I go? So, next season we head back to the top flight and we finished the season two to three weeks before the end of the Premiership. So it's probably unsurprising that we've been linked with a whole host of players from across Europe and further still, um, whilst the Premiership is still playing out. Firstly, we have to remember that the stories aren't always real. Sometimes it's going to be an agent who's trying to generate interest in his player, try to create a transfer, if you will. Other times, and there's lots of news agencies now who are just trying to create clickbait, trying to get you to click and look at the story when it's not really there. So what we're going to do is we're going to look through some of those and decide what we kind of think they might be. We're going to we're going to look at see whether or not the player might fit into the club, into the Pozzo model, into what we need, into the budget. What's the likelihood, do we think? And then over the next few weeks, we'll see how some of these play out. Now, some of them we will get wrong, probably very wrong, and others we may get right. But we'll find out as the uh, as the close season progresses and as we go through Euro 21. First, though, an actual signing. Quandro Bar has joined us. He first started off at the Crystal Palace Academy. He had a season last year at Rochdale. Um, he did pretty well in the first half of that season, so well, in fact, that Manchester City had lined up a transfer for him. He failed the medical due to apparently a heart defect. Um, but I think we can rest assured because Watford will have poured all over him with a medical and making sure that everything is all right. I think the opportunity that they missed, we're looking to take. So what kind of position does he play? He's a right-footed but left-sided player. So he will play from the left side and look to cut in. And he's quite direct, runs at, uh, runs at players quite a bit of pace and causes a bit of panic. He is only 18 uh, and yet he got the Division 2 or the League 2, sorry, um, Player of the Month award for January. So he's made a bit of an impact for a youngster, but he is only 18, so he'll probably be getting lots of games with the under 23s and potentially be looking to make an impact from the subs bench, replacing Ken Semmer as a you know an impact sub. That's what we imagine. So we turn to incoming rumours, and probably the biggest rumour um, and the most news that we've seen about has been about the potential return of Ashley Young from Inter Milan. Ashley played for us. In the promotion season 2006, he played for half the season in the Premiership and then got a move to Aston Villa. Three years after that, having really pulled up some trees at Villa and got himself into the England side, he moved on to Manchester United and it's been a roller coaster ever since then. He moved to Inter Milan at the back end of the previous season and has just obviously won the Scudetto. The rumours really started when he did an interview for the Golden Tales podcast for the club, which was released. And it really kind of came about in answer to the ruffled feathers of some supporters that he had support, you know, he'd really celebrated his free kick and his other goal at the rookery end a little too enthusiastically when he was facing Watford. And he hadn't really shown us the respect that we felt that we were probably deserved. And he, he really refuted that and really, you know, kind of, he sounded quite heartfelt and he also said, you know, he'd really like to end his career at Watford. In fact, he quoted, I think it was something along the lines of, I would walk back from Italy to sign for Watford again. So, of course, this has been up and around. And since the season has come to an end and a little bit before that, in fairness, the Ashley Young connection has been coming back again and again and again. Does he fit the Pozzo model? Well, no, not in the traditional sense that we would sign young players and then develop them and then sell them on and then so on and so forth. But the Pozzo model also includes the signing of senior mature players with experience who can help in the development of those younger players whilst doing a great job on the pitch. And I think Young absolutely falls into that category. He's played international football. Only three years ago, he was the left back at the World Cup for England. His delivery of set balls and uh, or set pieces, corners, free kicks into the box, which has been really an Achilles heel for us for a few years now, would be a real revelation and something I'd absolutely welcome. Why might it not happen? Well, Inter Milan are rumoured to have offered him a further year, despite the fact that he's going to be 36 in June. But also another Inter. Into Miami, David Beckham from across the pond would like him to go out to the US. So I suppose it's going to come down to Ashley and what he really wants. 
Um, I don't think he's probably going to stay at Inter Milan. I imagine that having won the Scudetto, they will look to probably strengthen in all likelihood. Um, it, the question really will come to, does he want to come back to the UK? And does he want to come back home? Or does he want to extend the adventure, the foreign adventure, and go over to the US and play for David Beckham? I think if he comes to the UK, he'll come to us. Fingers crossed. I'd say there's a 50% chance of us getting him. It wouldn't be a transfer window if we weren't linked with somebody from Udinese, either on loan or a permanent. In this case, the latest rumours are about Rodrigo de Paul. He was linked with a move to Leeds last close season, but I think they felt that 40 million euros was a bit steep for somebody who hadn't been challenged physically in the way that UK football tends to challenge you. So it didn't happen. So we've been linked to him. He's 26. He's a central attacking midfielder, although he can play again out on the wing. He's a bit of an upgrade on a Roberto Pereira sort of style of player. Um, if we were to take him on board, my challenge would be the fact that I'm not sure he'd fit into the 4-3-3 that we're currently playing. So we'd need to adapt to something like a 4-2-3-1 and let him play in the central role of that three behind the central player. It's a subtle distinction because 4-3-3 and 4-2-3-1, it, it's only a minor adjustment and you're sort of there. But what we would lose more from, than the formation is the person who might play in that third in midfield or, or behind, the, behind the forward, where Tom Cleverley has typically played that role in an aggressive kind of advanced defensive kind of way. You know, he's gone out and he's added grit and determination rather than what we might get from DePaul, which would be a bit more creativity, possibly looking to unleash Saar a little bit more. I suppose it's gonna depend whether or not we wanna be on the front foot and creative, or if we wanna be on the back foot and make sure we're nice and solid and that we've got that work rate from somebody like Cleverly, who's gonna be an asset to the squad either way, I'm sure. Likelihood, I'd say probably 20%. I don't see this particularly happening. Um, the only reason I think it would do is if the Pozzos are looking to put DePaul into a shop window that they can then sell into the UK market because he hasn't proved that yet out in uh, Udinese. He's got bundles of goals, bundles of assists, he's a very good creative player and he's no defensive slouch by any means but his emphasis and his real creativity is his proper strength. 20% I'd say. Now for a couple of players who fit the traditional Udinese Pozzo model probably a little bit better. Randall Colo Mouani is a centre forward with Nantes in northern France. Um, he is 22, he was a French under 21 international and he plays again a little bit like Barr who I mentioned earlier on. He's a right footed but left sided forward. Think about somebody like Anthony Martial who starts on the left side and drifts in, the traditional Thierry on reposition, if you like. But he's got more of kind of Ishmael Assar's level of physicality. Not his speed, but his physicality, his strength to kind of come through things. He looks fairly promising, but he's only had a season in Liga. He was previously out on loan at Boulogne um, and did quite well in the lower reaches. He's interesting, but he's being chased supposedly, according to rumour, by six different clubs. The one club at the front of the queue seems to be Eintracht Frankfurt who want to bring him in. His stats this year have been good for a first season. He's got five goals and he's got five assists from 30 appearances, but that's not earth shattering. Really, it's not. So I don't really necessarily see this one occurring. I think it's 10% likelihood, um, but he might be one of those people that we are monitoring closely rather than actually actively pursuing this summer. So final player today, a player by the name of E.K. Ugbo. He is one of Chelsea's loan player stable. They have a whole host of players who they put out on loan throughout Europe, especially in the Netherlands. They've got a big time with Vitesse Arnhem. But two seasons ago, Ugbo was on loan at JC Roda in the Netherlands. This last season, he has been on loan at Circle Bruges. Now, both those clubs would typically finish somewhere between kind of 15th and 8th on a good year in those divisions. So they haven't been playing for teams who are just putting it on a plate. But uh, Ike Agbo has come out with figures that are basically a goal every two games, which is pretty much the high water mark that you're looking for from a striker. And he's performed well. And the difficulty for him is, is that he's got Timo Werner in front of him. He's got Olivier Giroud in front of him. He's going to have whoever 
Roman Abramovich gives to Thomas Tuchel for either winning or getting to the semi or getting to the final of the Champions League up against him. He's got Tammy Abraham in front of him, who he resembles in some ways. Long story short, E.K. Ugbo really needs to move on. There is a five million euro buyout clause within his loan deal to Circle of Rouge, but apparently E.K. doesn't necessarily want to stay in Bruges. So he's looking for another move. But if you know about the Pozzos, you'll know that what they can do is they can go on to somebody. They've even been known to buy a player through another club and get him. So five million for a 22 year old, he's six foot one. He's quite aggressive. And as I say, some of his movement inside of the box, especially the way he gets across the front of his defender, really reminds me of Tammy Abraham, which isn't really a surprise because they will have had the same developmental coaches in the same position. He hasn't got the height of Tammy Abraham. He is a couple of years back from Tammy Abraham, but he's definitely a player with potential and one we would be taking a look at. I think we're in a, with a chance with this guy. I'm gonna say 40%, but I wish it was more. I think he looks interesting. I do hope you've enjoyed it. Please share. This is gonna be one of those videos that uh, you're gonna be able to come back in a few weeks and go, there you go, you got that wrong, didn't you? In all likelihood, we will. But we'll have a look at it. Cheers now, take care.